Welcome to the CQC video tutorial series. This is video number three, Starter Kit. So in this video, we are going to pick up where we left off. And in the previous video, we had ended with the installation of CQC. So now we are going to do what we are calling the basic starter kit. We are not going to explain a lot here. We're just going to show you some very fundamental things that you can use to start playing around yourself and to do some actually useful work on your own. And we'll get into these concepts in considerably greater depth in subsequent videos, but we just want to get you something to get you started here, so instant gratification. So what we need to do is to run the administrative interface. If you go to the Start menu, there should be a Charm Quark controller section there. Expand that out, and there should be an administrative interface option. So select that. We've not registered the product yet, so we get the NAG screen. For now, just close it and now we get the login screen and here we need to log in using the administrative account that we created during installation so mine was admin and testing now we need to set the latitude and longitude of this system and that's so that CQC can do sunrise and sunset type calculations which are important for various reasons I'm just going to select a nearby city here if you know your exact coordinates plug them in as it says in the text here be careful of your signs or you'll end up on the wrong side of the world and that will generate some very weird results. So now we are in the main administrative interface which is set up as a tree that you can expand out in order to customize and configure CQC as desired or required. The first thing we'll almost always do is to install device drivers since that's what CQC does, it controls devices. So we want to here in the devices section uh, add a driver We'll add more later, but for now we'll just do one. If we right click on this, and let me size this down so that you can see it, we will select add on server. Here you will see any CQC enabled systems where you have installed device driver support. So in this case, currently only one, since we've, since we've only installed one CQC system yet. So select that, and now we can select a driver to install. I am going to install just some device simulator drivers for this tutorial mostly and that's so we don't really have to have any actual hardware installed this will make it very easy for you to just play around with this on a laptop without having to worry about real hardware though you could go ahead and install real device drivers if, if you would like I'm going to select here in the make section go down to charmed quark and down here in the drivers available under this make and model there are a set of device simulator drivers I'm going to select lighting and you have to give a name to every driver we call it a moniker and it has to be unique within the CQC system. Since there's usually almost only ever one lighting system, I'm just gonna call it lighting. You should be more creative for those types of devices where you might add others later so that you can have good distinct names for them. And then you get a summary here, which in our case is just the moniker since that's all that these simulator drivers typically require. And hit install. And now if we expand out the list here you can see that driver it was initially in red because it was starting up once it comes online it goes black and now we're ready to start playing around here so first I'll give a very whirlwind tour of what a device driver is and this will be something that we will definitely get into in much more depth later but for now this is just enough to get you started if you double click the driver you will get this what we call a driver monitor and it just allows you to spelunk around in the raw interface that the device driver provides. A driver consists of a set of named fields and each of these named fields is a value that corresponds to something within the device itself that can be either read, which means the value gotten for use in some way, or written, which means we can change the state of that value in the device. So in the case of this lighting driver, we can see that we have, by kind of naming convention, we have these are lights and these are dimmers. These down here are switches. So we're going to play around with some switches here for this first demonstration. And just to show you what is going on here, we'll say family room main here, that is a switch. And obviously it's in the family room, in the main area of the family room, going by the name. And it is readable and writable, so that means we can both get the value and set it. And we can set it here just in, to play around. If we just click here, we can edit it in place. And this is a true or false value, so we can either type in true or one to turn it on or we could drop down this little helper here to turn it off again if we wanted to. So basically that 
operation there of reading or writing values and fields is fundamental to everything that you will do in CQC. And you can do a lot with no more than that. And that's all we're going to use today in this little demonstration. So now what we're going to do is set up a very simple touchscreen interface. And this is something that you would then be able to play around with a bit on your own before you go to the next video if you would like. So let's go to the customize section here and interfaces, which is where you will configure touchscreen interfaces. And then there's a section for system and a section for user. Your stuff always goes under user, which currently is empty. So if I click it, I don't get anything. So we want to create a user interface for our testing purposes here. And we generally recommend that you put all of your own content under another scope under the user section. So I'm going to right click and hit new child scope and I'll call this mine. You can obviously name that something better. And then under mine, I will create a new file and I'll call this first test. If we double click on that, we now get the user interface editor, which is where you create your touchscreen interfaces. And it is set up in a fairly conventional way. There's an editing area here. To the right are various types of tools. The main one is the attribute editor where you control the visual and interactive aspects of the things that you put onto your user interfaces. And we call those things widgets. You may know them as other names from any other type of program of similar sort that you have used before. But basically, as with most of them, you just right click and pop something onto the user interface and then you configure it to do as you would wish. I'm going to temporarily drop this down a bit so that you can see the top of the menu because it's kind of tall. So if we were to, let me size this down also so that it fits within our available area here. We're constrained for size in the recording software here. So if I were to right click down here and select new, and actually that's going to be off screen as well. Let me click further over. If I right click new, I get a list of widget types. And then within each of these sections, there are various widgets, specific types of widgets that I can select. I'm going to select a command button. Now let me move it back over here again. And I will move this back up now from this point forward, you will know that basically that's what I'm doing, although you won't be able to see the top of the menu. So now we can configure this button to do what we would like. And the first thing we'll do is to set the text to on. We're going to use this one to turn on a button. And now we also want to tell it what to do when it's clicked. And that is down here in the action section. An action is a set of commands that CQC will carry out on your behalf. And they are fundamental to CQC. So we will see this over and over again. If we click the ellipsis here to the right, this lets us edit things that are too complex to just edit in place here as many of these other types of values are. So let's go ahead and click that. And this will get us to the action editor. And this is something that you will see everywhere because this is how you configure CQC to react to user input, to remote control input, to do things at specific times and so forth. And what we'll do first is just create a simple command to turn a light on. So if we use the command button here, and then select devices, which is how we send commands related to devices. And then we're going to select field write, which is pretty much the most fundamental command in CQC. This lets us write a value to a field. So let's select a field and we will select the switch for family room main. Select that. Let's select a value, which would be true to turn it on. And that's it. This will now turn on a light. And it's that simple for many types of actions. Now we'll actually copy that and paste it. And this one we will set up to turn the light off again. So let's change the text to off. And basically all we need to do now is just tweak the action that already exists because we have the same action already in place since we just copied and pasted. So let's just change the value to false. And this will now turn the light off. Now, of course, this is not a real lighting system, so we can't see that it's actually doing anything. So let's actually do one more thing here. I will right-click again, New. I will select Images, and then I will select Field Boolean Image. So Boolean Image is something that shows one image for true, one image for false. And it's, in this case, it is a Field Boolean Image, which means that it gets its value from a field. And in this case, there's just a default uh, image set so that you can see it. And in our case, it happens to be convenient because the two images are light off and light on. 
and keep in mind that all this is just default appearance. We can make these look any way we want. For the first few videos here, we're just going to stick with the default appearance since we can we want to concentrate on the functionality and not the appearance for a while. So what we want to do now is to select a field that will control whether it shows one image or another. And you can see down here that it's telling us that no field is currently selected for, for some widget here. If we were to click off of that here and then go down and double click this, it'll take us to the widget that's in error. And what it's telling us is we need to select a field to control it. And that is done through this state field here. Click that and then let's select the same field which is the family room main switch. And that's it. We've now created a user interface. So let's save that. And now go back to the start menu, charm court controller section, and select the interface template viewer. And this is how we view interface templates. Again, lag screen, ignore that. And let's log in. And Go to File, Open, and let's expand out our Mind section and select our first test. And here is our user interface that we just created. If we click the On button, we see the light comes on. If we click the Off button, the light goes off. So that's it. You can actually do quite a bit with just this very basic functionality. So play around with that for a bit and try some of the other fields. And then we will come back in the next video and pick up from here and start to dig more deeply into some of these concepts.